All right, so what I want to talk about today is uh, using the performance manager chart to find what your peak performance is and understanding when you're at peak performance. So if you've read things about training, you've certainly read about peaking for races, right, and getting as strong as you can, and the resting, and that's not really what I'm talking about today. It's related to that, but the idea is, right, of course, when a race comes, an important race, you want to be as strong as you could possibly be, and you want to be at least somewhat rested so you're not too tired. But what I want to look at is using Golden Cheetah to understand um, how strong can you be. You know, am I at my pink peak strength right now, or um, do I still have ways I can go? And, and trying to understand that uh, in the moment. So <clears throat> this is all going to take place in the Performance Manager chart. So I've done a previous video about the Performance Manager chart, what these different values mean. If you haven't watched that, I recommend you go watch it if you're not familiar with the Performance Manager chart. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. So right, just as a quick refresher, um, the idea should be that your chronic trading load, your CTL, I like to think of that as sort of your uh, performance potential, right? It's it's sort of underneath um, how much could you potentially do. And then the pink, your acute training load, is your fatigue. And so when your fatigue is high, it's sort of covering up your potential performance, right? Because you're too tired, so you can't unleash it. Okay, so... It's obvious, right, that when a big race comes, you want your chronic trading load, your CTL, to be as high as possible, since that's your overall performance. The thing I want to talk about, though, is how do we know, is it as high as I can go at this point? Can I push it higher? Should I be trying to push it higher? So to understand this, we have to quickly look at the equations that define the ATL and the CTL. So it's a little bit of math, but I promise it's actually not really very difficult. So I got these from... Um, from the site, IanBarrington.com. To be honest, I haven't looked at the rest of his site, but I, I like his um, explanation for CTL, ATL, and CSB, or TSB. So here are the equations. So this is for acute training load. This is for chronic training load. Uh, they're actually essentially the same equation. So your acute training load for today is yesterday's acute, acute training load plus, and then you take the training stress score from your workout today minus yesterday's acute training load. And you divide it by, uh, so TCA stands for time constant acute. That just means, remember the acute training load looks primarily at the last seven days. So this is just dividing it by something that, that helps this sort of focus in on the last seven days. Chronic training load equation is the same thing. It's uh, yesterday's plus, and again, you take your training stress score, minus yesterday's chronic training load. And now you divide it by a time constant, so TCC, the C is for uh, chronic. So this sort of focuses in on the last 42 days. But again, these two things, TCA and TCC, are just two numbers. To be honest, I don't know exactly what those numbers are, but it's just two numbers. So let me go ahead and do an example to, to make this a little more clear. I'm going to do the example for chronic trading low, but since the equations are basically the same, you could do either one. So here's the equation again, chronic, chronic training load is yesterday's chronic training load plus training stress score minus yesterday's chronic training load divided by some number. We're not going to really worry about what this number is today. So let me, let's go ahead and jump in an example. So um, let's see here. Uh, let's take, so here, well, let's take the peak one right there. So I can see my peak chronic training load was 61. So, oops. My chronic, let's pretend that now that was yesterday. My chronic training load was 61. And now today I go out and do a workout. I don't know, let's just say I do 100 training stress score. And right, in case you're not clear with that, you, know, you can go to your rides, pick any ride you want. So let's say I did some intervals, um, and then we look training stress score, I had 79. Or I did a sweet spot ride, 108, or whatever. So let's just make it easy, let's pick 100. So the equation says we better do a training stress score minus the CTLY, so 100 minus 61, so that's 39. And so now what is today's chronic training load? It's yesterday's chronic training load, 61, plus, now I take this value, 39, and I divide it by some constant. Let's not worry about that. So that gives you something, 61 plus some positive number, 39 divided by some constant. I don't know, I'm just going to make it up. Let's just pretend it's like about 64 or so. Okay, so my point is just, we can see that since my training stress score minus CTLY, since that is a positive number, it's 39, I'm adding something to 
to yesterday's trade, uh, yesterday's chronic trading load. <clears throat> so let's do this again, but let's pretend that maybe I took a rest day. So if I took a rest day, my training stress score would be zero. So this would be zero minus 61, which of course is negative 61. So now it's 61 plus negative 61 divided by something. Or if you want, you can just make that 61 minus 61 divided by something. So now, right, it's 61, and then I'm subtracting some amount. I don't know, let's just call it 57 is what it gets or so. So my point is, hopefully you can see that in order to make my chronic trading low be higher than it was yesterday, the important thing is that my training stress score, or whatever my workout is, is above yesterday's chronic trading low. So in the example here, in order to make today's CTL be higher than yesterday's, my training stress score just has to be above 61. Anything above 61 will make it go up a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> with that, we can now get a little better idea of why or what I mean when I say what is your peak performance. In the start of the season, you're getting stronger and stronger pretty quickly. So it's not that difficult to each week or say each month, if you do it on average, to train harder than you did the last week or the last month because you're getting stronger. And so because of that, I could keep doing higher chronic training loads than the week before. I could keep bumping it up more and more. But I think it's pretty clear that's not going to work forever. Eventually, right, your body is going to say, I can't give you any more. Either you're too tired, you accrue injuries, you get sick, whatever it is. It just can't give you any more. So at some point, right, there's going to be such diminishing returns that it's going to start to level out. And that is what I'm referring to as your peak performance. So when a big race is coming up, the important thing for us, especially later in the season then, is to get as close to that peak performance as you can. You know now that trying to push above that peak performance, you're probably going to have to work really, really hard. Let's say my peak performance was 61. If I wanted to get it above, I'd have to be pushing myself so hard that probably I would end up getting injured or sick or something. On the other hand, if I know 61 is attainable and it's not at 61 now, then I know I should be pushing it higher. So <clears throat> here we see, right, that at the beginning of the season I had a real fast ramp up or you know, pretty good for me, uh, ramp up until about this point. And then I sort of had a forced vacation because my parents came to town for a while, so I had to take some time off. And then I started back at it, and it started to grow again. But around here, I was finding that I was really getting achy. I just felt like I couldn't keep training hard, so I took a break, and now I'm starting back up again. So what you can kind of see is three things. One is compare the rate of growth here to the rate of growth the second time. I think it's pretty clear my rate of the CTL growth was faster in the earlier in the season. So that means when I came back, yes, it was still increasing, but it was less, so that's one thing. And um, the other thing is that now when I'm back, I'm having a hard time, in fact, getting it up at all, getting the, the CTL to rise any more than. So um, what this, when I see this, what this hints to me is that, okay, I'm basically at my, um, my peak performance. So for these last races coming up, right here, this last line, my goal now is to get it back above 61, or get it back near 61. So that's great, and I, now I have that as a target. But what if you're earlier in the season, let's say that you're sort of like around this point or so, and you've got a race coming up, and you're trying to see you know, can I keep growing my CTL? Am I close to what my max is? You know, or do I have a ways more I can go? Um, here I have the, the benefit of hindsight being able to see that it was hard for me to get uh, the CTL to rise. But there's one thing you can add in that I think is pretty helpful. So go up to more, go all chart settings. So we saw that really the key to getting your CTL to rise is putting in bigger training stress score. Right? Each day I need my training stress score to be above whatever it was before. So I'm going to go into the, I went to more ultra settings, go to curves. Let me add in training stress score. So TSS, training stress score. Uh, I don't like the bar, I like the dots. And let me change this up so we can see a little better how it green. Okay. So, all right, fine. Now I can see, so this is the training stress score for my different rides. So for example, let me close this for one sec. Um, on April 29th, I had a training stress score of 103. 
The problem is, so far, that's not so helpful. It's just a lot of dots. But let me go ahead and edit this. So um, what I'm going to do, first thing I want to sort of point out is, let me change highlight highest to 10. So you get something kind of interesting here. What I see is that of my 10 highest, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them occurred in just this past, oh, I don't know, month or so. So the whole season, if I just looked at that, I might say, shoot, I'm way stronger than I was before. I am getting my best performances uh, very recently. Even, in fact, in the second part where I'm having a hard time getting my CTL to rise. Still, I have a peak. Okay. But let's look at one more thing. Let me edit this one last time. And I'm going to add a trend line. Let me add a quadratic trend that gives a little more data than just a linear trend. So now I think this is very interesting. What I can see is that overall, my training stress score was going up and up and up and up in the first part of the season, meaning I was putting more and more effort out on each ride. And then notice where this levels out. When this levels out, my CTL was still going up, but if you look at something, right, you can kind of see my CTL is stagnating a little bit. And in fact, this is the part where it seems like I'm about at peak performance. I'm a little below. I hit 61 later, but I'm not that far off. You know, this is 54.9, 55, 6. It's pretty close. So if I would have only been earlier this season, if I didn't have all of this data yet to look at, I would already be able to see it looks like maybe I am approaching my peak performance. So that's helpful for me for uh, knowing when I'm going to be peaking and knowing which races I can do well. In fact, uh, this race I got fourth, which was at the time was my best result of the year, and then I got first in the next road race. I won that one. So, um, and then later we can see it's starting to dive there. So, I think that's helpful on its own. One of that you can now hopefully um, try to get a hint as to what direction is your performance heading. Is it still trending upward very strongly? Or are you maybe starting to reach a peak into what your body can handle at this point? So the last thing I want to say in all this is one interesting thing is, so like I said, here in this last month or so, I've got a lot of real big training stress score rides. I'm doing that on purpose. And so it's kind of strange to look at this and say, well, why then is my CTL, why am I having a hard time getting my CTL to rise? It's certainly not as steep as it was earlier. One thing you can see is, Yes, I've got a lot of big numbers here, but there's not much. Everything between, this is about 200 and, I don't know, 80-ish or so, 180 or so in there. There's not many rides. Whereas if you look at the rest of the season, right, there's a lot of dots in that area. So what's happening is I'm doing these real big rides, which is good for me, but then I need more recovery time, right? And I can't do as many of these sort of medium to medium hard rides. So the reason I point that out is, for me, I'm doing these big rides because this last, my A race is a long race, it's 64 miles, so I need to be able to uh, be used to that. But if I want my CTL to rise, now that I've started to get used to these long rides, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop those and start doing more rides that are sort of in this range and a little bit higher. Not, not these monster ones that I was doing, monster for me. And in that way, I'm able to get my uh, CTL to continue to rise again and hopefully get back near my peak performance. Uh, without overtiring myself. So I hope that helps to, to understand some of the main things about how you can predict where your peak performance is at. Uh, if you have questions or something's unclear, please feel free to uh, leave a question in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks and good luck.